Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> Hello there, ladies and gents. I am the Almighty Zentaco, and today we're going to be learning how to make an explosion effect for an object in an isometric or top down game. So, here's what it's going to look like when we are finished. Uh, right now, we got these terribly drawn barrels, and I can click on them and they will explode. And it sends these little fragment projectiles which scatter across the screen. And they do so in a manner in which they appear to be in a three-dimensional space. So let's get down to it. Let's start a new frame and make this effect. Okay, so let's do some things here. First thing I'm going to do is insert a backdrop. This is just going to be some grass. Now I do recommend in an isometric game like this or a top-down game, that you probably use layers, but I'm not going to do that because I want to uh, do this quickly. And as always, this is not the best way. This is just a way to do this. All right, so insert an object. This is going to be our barrel. Let's make it a little bigger. We're going to name it barrel because that is what it is. Now, the barrel is going to need some art. So I'm going to do that real quick. All right, so here's our barrel. Um, I didn't make this barrel. I stole this. Sorry. Whoever drew this barrel, I'm going to use it. Hope you don't mind. It is quite a nice barrel. Okay, so we're going to insert another object. This is going to be our fragment, and we're going to name it as such, fragment. Now, the fragment is going to need some alterable values. So let's go ahead and give it at least three. And use an X speed. I didn't spell that right. XSPD needs a Y speed. <clears throat> YSPD. Man, I can't type it. Um, it needs a target Y. Let's give it rotational speed too. Call that rot SPD. All right, so let's go ahead and just draw some squiggly sharp. Uh, geometric shape here just to represent a broken piece of barrel and we will paint this brown boom maybe uh, stick a line in it as if it were a piece of wood see this is made of pieces it's a wood fragment that's the idea all right so there's our broken barrel wood fragment let's copy some of these around we need to insert another object this is going to be our explosion We'll call it explosion. Uh, it needs to be fairly big. So the boom does not need any alterable values. You do want to make sure though that you click on the runtime options for this and uncheck create at start. We don't want this thing to exist until we create it later. Same thing for the fragment. That being done, we're going to need another object, throw it in. And this is going to be our smudge object, which is what's going to happen when the um, fragment hits the ground where we want it. So go ahead and draw a smudge. I'm just going to make this a really simple little smudgy thingy. Boom. There's our smudge. Um, I'm going to go ahead and crop it and center my hotspot. Now I want the smudge to eventually go away so I'm going to give it a value called trans and I'm going to give it a transparency and then it's going to be destroyed when it hits a certain transparency level. Okay, let's get down to programming. This should be everything we need. So let's um, let's go ahead and say, now obviously you would do this uh, for a barrel whenever it, maybe it got shot enough times to be destroyed. So if it's hit points for zero or something, that's when you would do this. But we're gonna do it by clicking just because that's expedient. So the mouse user clicks on an object, single click, and that's a barrel. Now what we're gonna do is create an object and that's going to be the boom object and I'm going to create that relative to the barrel so it's going to create an explosion effect and then I'm going to start a loop and that loop is going to be called anything you want but I'm going to call it fragments because what it's going to do is spawn fragments and I'm going to run it five times plus a random value we're going to say a random five so this can this can give us um, between five and nine fragments. So this will allow us to generate um, the specific number of fragments that we want. All right, so now we need to do an on loop, which is under the special object. So select on loop, and that's gonna be fragments. 
And what we want to do is create the fragment relative to the barrel. And then we want to give it some random values. So go ahead and set its alterable value of x speed to our random, which is a random range. And we're going to say, now this is dependent on the size of your frame and exactly how scattered you want these to be, but I'm going to say like negative 4 to 4. Now obviously we want to create this first. It puts it below it when you make an, or above it when you make a new one, which I think it's silly, but whatever. I'm going to copy and paste this and just simply edit this one to change the y speed. Now the y speed is also going to be our, uh, our random, but we want it to be always in the negative because it's going to fire upward not down. Now keep in mind though with an R random uh, you need to have the smaller value first followed by the larger value so we're gonna say negative 6 to a negative 1. If you do this the opposite way it'll have some unusual unexpected effects. Alright we're gonna copy and paste this again and edit the third one to set a rotational speed. Again, our random, and we'll say negative 30 to positive 30 will be our rotational speed variability. And then lastly, we want to set the value of target Y. Now what target Y is, it's going to be a scattered Y uh, position from the initial position. We're gonna use this target value to decide whenever the fragment has hit the ground. Now obviously this is not an, a real three-dimensional space, so this is just an illusion. So we're gonna do that this way we're going to set the target Y to its current position on the Y axis plus an R random. Now I feel this looks better if you have more uh, space potentially down than up. So, so we're gonna say the value is gonna be like negative 200 to 300. So we've created the uh, explosion effect and started the loop. Now we need an always event to always move these by uh, move these fragments by the variables that we have set. So set an always event, and real simply, we're going to set the x and y position. So we're going to say set x coordinate to the fragment's current x coordinate, and we're going to add the value of x speed. And then we're going to do the same thing for the y position. So set the position y coordinate to its current y coordinate and we're going to add the value of y speed. Now we need to have these things move downwards so we're going to always need to increase the value of y speed. So go ahead and do that now. Alter value. Add to y speed. No, sorry that was target y. Uh, y speed and we're going to say 0.1. Now you can play with this to get the gravity that you desire but that is what I'm going to use. Now we also want to rotate this object, so go to scale and angle, set the angle, grab the current angle of this fragment, and then add the value of rotational speed, which is rot speed. And we're going to do one for maximum quality. Okay, so now whenever the fragment is below the target Y, and it's moving downward. We don't want this to happen when it's moving up. Um, then we know that we have hit where we want it to be on the ground and uh, we're going to destroy it and create a smudge. So do that this way. Go to the fragment. We're gonna find out if the position is greater on the y-axis than the value of target y. So when that is the, is the case, we have reached where we want it to have made ground fall and connection with the ground, and that's when we're gonna create the smudge and destroy it. So we're going to do this, we're going to create an object, and that's gonna be the smudge relative to the fragment, and this should be scoped properly. So uh, target, yeah, and then we need to destroy the fragment. Now make sure that we have this in the right order. We want to create the smudge obviously before we destroy the fragment or this will be a problem. We also want to find out if the alterable value of y speed is greater. I'm going to give it a value of 3. We're going to play around with that though. That might not be quite what we want. Um, one more thing we need to do. Whenever the animation of boom Where's that at? 
uh, whenever an animation is finished, and that is the stopped animation, we want to destroy boom this effect. Otherwise that effect will be hanging around on its final animation frame and it'll look really stupid. So whenever the animation stop is over, we're going to destroy that object. Let's test it out. Okay. Now the effect actually does look pretty good, but as you can see, um, it's not coming from the proper barrel and we didn't destroy the barrel. So we got to make sure we do that. I'm actually going to increase the size though of this boom effect because the barrels are kind of big. So I'm just gonna just gonna scale that thing up, no biggie. All right. <clears throat> so why did that happen? Well, the problem, uh, the reason the the reason the uh, fragments are coming off the wrong barrel is because we are starting a loop here, and whenever you start a loop, for some reason, it like when we clicked on the barrel, it was scoped for this event. But then down here on the on the uh, loop fragments event, it is not still the same barrel scoped, so we need to fix that. We need to make sure that we are scoping the appropriate barrel. So to do that is, we're gonna do this. When we click on the barrel, we're also going to do something. Um, we're gonna use a global value, and we're going to plug the ID of the barrel into that value, and then we're gonna check against that value. Now you don't have to use a global value, you can use any value you want, like an alterable value or whatever on an object, but I'm just gonna use a global value, so. We're gonna set a global value. I'm not even gonna name it, it's just gonna be global value A. And I'm going to go to the barrel and select retrieve fixed value. So that's gonna plug in the fixed value of that barrel into that global value. Now what a fixed value is, if you don't know, is that every object in Fusion has its own unique ID. That's what a fixed value is. It's very useful for scoping out the proper object. All right, so on line two, for the on loop fragments, we want to include another uh, condition. We want to find out if the global value of A equals and go to the barrel and retrieve the fixed value. Make sure on loop fragments is first. Otherwise, it turns red, and red means something's wrong, probably. Lastly, um, we need to destroy the barrel on line one after we click on it. After all this stuff happens, we want the barrel to be destroyed. So click on the barrel and select destroy, but make sure that is the last thing that happens because if we destroy the barrel before we run the loop, um, then there will be no barrel to create these fragments off of. So this should work, let's take a look. That didn't work at all. We made a mistake <clears throat> on line two. We checked to see if the global value of A equals fixed. This is actually opposite we want to compare to a fixed value and then find out, how can I explain this better? Um, this is opposite. We want to actually, instead of, I know it looks the same, this is an equal signs, but it's not quite the same in how Fusion deals with it. So we want to actually find out if the fixed value equals global value A, not if global value A equals a fixed value. I know that seems silly, but this is how you make sure the appropriate object is scoped. So we're gonna replace that. We're gonna go down to compare a to fixed value under the barrel, and we're gonna find out under the special object uh, if it equals the global value A. We're gonna do that by clicking retrieve a global value, and we're gonna select global value A. So now it should have appropriately scoped this object. Let's find out. Boom. Pretty good effect, I think. It has it has the illusion of, of uh, three dimensionality. Okay, I did notice that though the Y speed is maybe not it's not maybe not going up enough, so we're gonna increase the potentiality to negative ten on the randomization of the Y speed. And let's check it now. That might be too high, maybe not. It is a big explosion. Okay, so we have an always event on line three. We need to add to that. Uh, what we're gonna do now is make this little smudge become transparent. So all we're gonna do is always add to the alterable value of trans. We'll add one. And then we're also going to always set under effect and compatibility, we're going to set the semi-transparency of this smudge to its transparency value. So grab trans. Now this will happen really quickly because the value is starting at zero. So we want to change that. 
So click on the smudge and under trans, set it to a negative value. That way it has more time where it's visible before it starts to hit the range in which it starts to become transparent. We're gonna say negative 200, but you can play around with that to get the effect that you desire. Another thing you can do is, um, I'll show you right now. Let's increase the size of the smudge just a tad. And let's add some more frames. So we're just gonna go ahead and draw some random shapes here for our smudges. And then whenever we create the smudge, we're gonna give it a random animation value. So go to animation, change, animation frame, and we're gonna say random, and however many they were, I think there were five. So now it's gonna have random smudges. Um, let's also go back to the smudges and make sure that the animation doesn't have a speed. We'll set it to zero, because we don't want it to animate. So now these smudges should all be slightly different. Now, as you see, um, when the smudge hits the ground and it's on a barrel, that looks a little weird. So we can go ahead and get rid of that. So we'll do that this way. We'll say, is the smudge overlapping another object? And that's the barrel. And if that's the case, we'll just simply destroy the smudge. We don't want smudges to land on top of barrels. All right, so you didn't even see it when it landed on top of the barrel. It just didn't appear. I'm gonna show you one last trick to help you sort the barrels in case they overlap. For example, let's say I did something like this. Now, as you see, actually that looks kind of cool. It looks like stacked barrels. <laughs> that was not what I meant to do. Like if I do this, so the barrels, they're out of order, obviously. And so you want to have a descending Y sort on these. So let's go ahead and insert an object. We're going to make this the uh, layer object. Where is that? Let me type in L. Layer object. Boom. So we're going to sort these at the start of the frame. So go ahead and insert a new event. Start of frame. And all we're going to do is under the layer object, go to sort by Y decreasing. I, I might have that wrong. Let's run. Nope, that's fine. As you see, they've now sorted properly and it has the appropriate um, sort of illusion that we are in a three-dimensional isometric space. So there we go, guys. That is how you create a, a scattered explosion effect in an isometric top-down game for barrels. You can apply this to any explosion in a pseudo three-dimensional space to get the same sort of scattered effect, and it just makes your games look that much better. So thanks guys for watching. I hope you found this video useful as always. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below, and I recommend you join my Discord channel. Link in the description. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you in the next video.